minutes left, so we'll go on to one more question. From Craig Lunt, please. Is anyone served by the creation of a regulator which no journalists will subject themselves to? This is, of course, very pertinent this week. The establishment of a royal charter agreed by the Queen and by everybody in the House of Commons and by no newspapers. What's the point of it all? Paris Lees. I find myself in an awkward position quite a lot because I campaign for better media representation of transgender people and I'm also a journalist so I, I'm kind of trying to establish myself in a media that I'm also trying to critique and reform um, and I can honestly say that the idea that this industry can regulate itself is like expecting a pack of wolves to kind of regulate its own hunt. It's just not going to happen, you know? <laughs> Clearly, they're never going to sign up to something that the government's come up with and you're never going to find a solution that's, that's good for everybody. But there needs to be something. They, they've meant to be self-regulating for, you know, 300 years, I read in the Daily Mail today. Well, it's just not working. Ofcom does it. Television does it. You wouldn't be able to just say whatever you want on television. What makes newspapers so special? And can I say, actually, it's been really refreshing to see uh, Ed Miliband taking on the Daily Mail. I was really surprised because people are so terrified of taking on these, these newspapers newspapers and ever since that in Prime Minister's questions he's had real oak in his penis I think it's done in the world of good <laughs> Chris Brown uh, yeah look I, I mean broadly speaking I agree with Paris <laughs> <laughs> um, including about the last bit mm -hmm. you're obsessed Matthew um, <laughs> the uh, I think um, look the most important thing for me is that I think ordinary members of the public know that the PCC, the system that we've had, didn't work. The people of Hillsborough were not served. They couldn't get a correction out of the sun, could they? They couldn't use the courts because no criminal offence had been committed by the sun when it said that people had um, been, that, that, that fans had stolen from um, dead people's pockets and all of that kind of stuff, all of which was completely and utterly untrue. They couldn't get a correction because the PCC, the system just didn't work. So what I want is a very simple thing, which is a system whereby people when newspapers have to correct it when <coughs> they've got it wrong. All right. Did you vote for the Royal Charter? Uh, I can't remember whether there was a vote, but I've campaigned for this for All so right. long now. Do, that... do, do you think it's fair that under the Crime and Courts Act, yes, yes, courts are told that publishers who don't belong to this Royal Charter, which none of them wish to belong mm -hmm. to, will have to pay not only their own legal fees, but the fees of people who sue them and are found to have no case, but so that everybody can sue them without any risk of losing money themselves, the proprietor will have to pay. Is that fair or well, is that bullying the press? I, I, I think, uh, I mean, the press sometimes bully as well. And, yes. Uh, and, uh, Some of the most vulnerable members of society that don't have the money to take them to court like these rich celebrities do. I, 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 which oh, is a really? very important point. And that's why I think <laughs> yeah. it's important that what, what Lord Leveson tried to do and what the Charter tries to do is it simply tries to say that there should be a fair system and it's up to newspapers whether they sign up to it, but there will be incentives for them to do so. The incentive is that if they sign up to the Royal Charter system, then there will be a cheaper way of arbitration. Mm. I, I, the, all the hyperbole, the exaggeration, <coughs> all the tosh that the newspapers have come out with in the last fortnight is, uh, frankly, I don't think has done them any favours. Right. Harriet Sargent, we've only got a couple of minutes okay, left. Okay, I write for the Daily Mail and the Sunday Times, so I am not on these people's side. I mean, I think we should... <laughs> We should judge institutions by how they deal with their scandals. And we have had scandals in the press. I what mean, about the main That one? is all clear. But how have they dealt with their scandals? Well, what do we have this week? We have two editors on trial. We have eight journalists on trial in the courts. The, the uh, News of the World Not no longer the exists. Careful, no, careful, that careful, careful, done. careful when you talk about well, this. Now let, let, sorry, let, let us just look how other institutions have, re, have dealt recently with their scandals. Look, let's look at the BBC. Uh, let's look at bankers. Let's look at the NHS. Well, what happens there? I mean, are there, there people, when their things happen, are there rotten, rotten apples? Are they um, in jail? Are any of them on trial? I don't think so. Jeremy Brown, we've really got to come to an end because we've only got, we're over well, I'll respond, I'll respond, I'll respond direct to that point. I'm in favour of free speech, free expression, free press. But it, it's not a completely unconditional freedom. And that freedom comes with responsibilities as well. And we also uh, ought to protect weak people, uh, vulnerable people, 
from the effects of the powerful. And the powerful can be the state, it can be companies, but it can be groups of organisations, including newspapers. And the winds of change are blowing through large parts of our country. We know it in Parliament, where it's happened, and it's happened in trade unions and elsewhere. And the days of everybody sort of self-regulating and don't you worry about it too much, and we're not going to have any transparency or openness, I think those days are going, not just in the media, but across the board in services, in companies, as I say, in Parliament. Well, and I think the media have to realise that they have responsibilities I, as well. I have to move you on. Thank you. Thanks. Matthew Hancock. The stalemate is between a royal charter on the one hand and a press who says they'll have nothing to do with it. What's going to happen? Well, I think that what the public want to see is the press freedoms that we have had for years and that rightly are there to make sure that politicians are held to account that our country is run in a fair and transparent way as possible, but with, but with safeguards to make sure that the vulnerable are protected and that victims are supported and that those who can't fight back have a voice in this. But I would not want that, that to overrule the fact that we have a fantastic thing in Britain, which is we stand up to the overmighty, we fight back against a hierarchy, and it's that freedom that the press argue so passionately for, that even though it affects me negatively as a politician, because they have a go at all politicians... And expose all me, your expenses. It, absolutely, they expose the expenses, which wouldn't have happened without a free press, and that makes me proud to be British. Mm. Yeah, but, what, but what's not said is that actually the press are the hierarchy, we're talking about 500 of the most elite, pampered, privileged, overwhelmingly white, overwhelmingly male, overwhelmingly heterosexual, old boys club that all went to Eton and Cambridge. And Sorry, booking... are you talking about the BBC or the NHS? <laughs> 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 the whole of the right. media. On which note? I just wish the Prime Minister on, would do it occasionally. On.